In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make a compound interest calculator in Excel, as well as some things that you could do to make it just a little bit sleeker. So, we're going to want to first set up a sheet like this where we have rate, number of periods, payment, present value, and future value. Now we're just going to start typing in some values and then calculate the future value. So, we're going to have to assume the rate, which is the rate for every period, at 2%. The number of periods, let's just say it is 10 periods. The payment, which where the payment is the, the payment that you could be putting into the amount at every single period. We're just going to assume this to be zero. Present value, which is the starting value. We're going to assume to be thousands. In future value, we're going to calculate it using the FE function. So FE open parentheses. The rate, the rate per period is 2%. Comma. NPER, number of periods. 10 periods. Payment, we're going to assume no payment in this situation. So, that's right there, zero. And the next two arguments are optional, so the function will still work without the next two arguments. We're gonna go ahead and include the present value, um, which is starting balance, and then comma, just to show you, this, we're not gonna use this argument, but the type is a zero, which allows you to assume that the payment occurs at the end of the period, which is default. And you can type in a one for the payment to occur at the beginning of the period. Um, we're gonna, just gonna leave that blank and leave out the default. So close parentheses. And then, as you can see, it's negative right here. So we're going to put a negative sign in front of the formula. And now we can see that $1,000 with a rate of 2% compounded 10 times um, gives a future value of $1,218.99. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to make a graph that kind of, that kind of reflects this. So we're going to do period and then total amount. This is a graph that kind of just shows the compounding. So we're going to put for the period, first we're going to do shift right arrow and control B just to bold this. Next for the period, just going to type one and then enter and then equals the, the cell above it plus one. We're going to control C and shift and then down arrow until you get, I'm just basically dragging it down um, until you get the total of the periods. And then for total amount, we are going to use um, this formula right here. So we're going to use DC. So the total amount for the first period is equal to $1,000, right? And then for the, for the second period, um, it is going to be equals equals to a thousand dollars. It's equal to the starting value times one plus the rate, and then to the power of the period that we're in. And then enter. As we can see, for the second period, it's one thousand and forty point four four. Now we're going to go in and we're going to lock in um, the present value. So I'm on a laptop, so move your function F4. If you're in front of a uh, computer, you can just press F4 to put dollar signs in front of um, these cells to lock it in. Same thing with the E3. Um, F4, or if you're like me on a laptop, function F4, then press enter. Now we're going to copy this down. As you can see, the end value right here um, is the same as this value right here. Now we're going to highlight these values and do insert recommended charts. And then I like a line graph of this kind of stuff right here. And then boom, as we can see, we have the, we have a little calculator here, we can change the different values. Then we also have a um, basic graph right here. As I said though, there are some things that you can do to make this a little bit sleeker. So we're going to get these values down here because um, we're going to make some adjustments to these values right here. So one thing we can do is we can have more flexibility um, kind of how the number of periods is shown. We're having a drop down given the frequency. 
and then to do this we're going to go to data then we're going to go to data validation data validation settings list and for this we're just going to type in daily monthly and annual and then now we're going to say and then now we're going to say they're going to have a sub of year and just say number of years i'm just going to say put two years as dummy value right here and they're going to say okay then period so we're going to use the nested if function so if the frequency equals in quotations annual then it's just going to be the number of years if false if the frequency is equal to monthly it is the number of years times 12 if all that is false going to number number of the number of years times 365 last value as possible is daily now it's gonna it's gonna throw this because um there's nothing put there but let's just say we have annual it's two one thing 24. one thing to note too um is that we also need to make sure that the rate so is a per period rate um so right here we're going to change this to be an annual rate. Is it seems to be analyzed? Uh, also, if you made it this far, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. I post every uh, two to three days, so you don't miss out on new content. So per period rate. Please like as well too. So we're gonna do a similar logic. Equals if the frequency equals annual comma the value is true so it's annual rate value false another if so if the frequency is equal to monthly we're gonna have the rate divided by 12 if all that is false it's rate to rate divided by 365 you close parentheses okay and then now you're going to have it to where the future value calculation is not not is not based on the annual rate but the per period rate this is useful though because it allows you to see okay so if this compound did a monthly versus annual how does that different right so we have an annualized rate um for for two years at two percent it's compounded monthly we get a future value of one thousand forty dollars and seventy cents if it's compounded annual it's a little bit less so you can see how changing compounding frequency impacts the um final value that you get which is very very useful now for here um we're going to make this a little bit longer. So, as you can see, 24 periods, 1,644. And this is 1,040. That is because this is not using the per period rate like it should be. So this needs to be just as well, 2, 2E3. And then control C, copy and paste this down. As you can see, 1,4078. And now we're going to want to to get make sure this graph includes these values as well too. We're going to click on this graph right here. You can either just completely remake the graph, which sometimes honestly is easier, or you can just click on the graph and drag these values down. Um, as you can see, these values are included now. In a future video, I'm going to show you what you can think, a couple things that you can do to make the graph a bit thicker as well too. So, why not right now? So, we're going to make it to where the range of the period and the total amount changes 
based on the number of periods that are there. So you don't have to redo the graph as much every single time. So you can say if to open parentheses, this value right here is greater than than the total number of periods, we're just going to have it be blank. But if this is false, then we're going to just have the value appear plus one in the close parentheses. Now we're going to have now we're going to change this for annual just for demonstration purposes. Um, and as we can see, we have this formula right here. You're going to want to lock in this E6. And then we are going to drag it down. As you can see, we have some error values. So we're going to wrap this in an if error. If error. The value of error, so if this is an error, it's just going to be blank. Now we're going to have this calculation be based on this this right here. So we're going to say, hey, so if you know, so we're going to say right here, if this is blank, then have this be blank as well. But if it's not blank, then do this calculation. So as you can see right here, we can control C, control V. And basically it's saying, hey, you know, okay, right, so what we did right here was we just said, hey, the number of periods, um, if the number period above it plus one is less than or equal to the total number of periods, it's just gonna be blank, it's, it's gonna be blank. And then if the total amount right here is less, is, is gonna be based on here. So if this is blank, then this is gonna be blank as well too. If it's not blank, then it's going to be um, doing the calculation. So if we change it from annual to monthly, then it's going to be um, changing to two annual. As you can see, if you type in five for annual, it auto just automatically changes like that. And as you can see, the graph isn't um, adjusting perfectly to this at all. So as you can see, it kind of just looks kind of weird um, with it dropping off like that. One thing I can do is you can just, I mean, just simply adjust the graph as needed. Um, but the best thing to do is to make a dynamic range. Um, so you can make a go into formulas, um, name manager, make a dynamic range, then have the range in the graph be referenced to a dynamic range I made in formula manager. But that said, that's a topic for another video. Um, that's a little bit more um, involved. One well, last thought that you could consider doing is just also have a column with interest. So you can just have like the total amount minus the starting balance. To just kind of show how the um, interest has changed. To the amount of interest that has accrued and you can also kind of see just how it has changed from period to period so just something that i just kind of look like which is something that i just personally like to um look at so you can kind of see how it's increasing at an increasing rate that's it i hope you found this to be useful and if you did like subscribe comment um thank you for watching and hope you all have a great day